fragmentation attack. Okay, and this attack here uh, actually helps attacker to bypass a web application firewall or IDS or IPS. Okay, because the, the attacker here tried to implement a kind of attack like insertion attack. So he tricks the IDS to have a different packet than the host. Okay, and when the host do the assemble, okay, because we we know when you send the packet, the packet will be uh, divided into many parts, and this part is called the fragmentation here, okay? So due to the maximum transfer units which used by a router. And when the, the firewall receives these, um, or actually let me share the screen, uh, because I need all of you to uh, imagine this technique here, okay, and also see. Uh, but you will explain it in deep in the, uh, in the course. The, uh, second uh, lesson. Actually, the, this attack is an advanced attack. Okay, it, it's not an OSCP. Okay, but when you do a penetration testing or uh, a red teaming activity, sometimes you need to bypass an anti malware. Okay, or a bypass a web application firewall, for example. In order to bypass a web application firewall, you can go with some techniques like obfuscation or encryption and so on. Okay, so that's the best technique to bypass web application firewall. Or you can simply go with another technique like insertion attack. So let me show you how insertion. So we don't have an animation here, but let me open this one and try to imagine. We have an end host, okay, uh, the victim device. And we have the IDS or web application firewall, which prevents attackers to exploit the vulnerability in the host here or attacking the host. And the attacker will rely on a fragmentation and TTL value here to make a certain packet travel to the end host and send a fake packet also to the IDS. And when the IDS try to reassemble this fragment here, he will assemble the wrong order, okay, which makes the IDS have a false assumption. Yeah, this packet will be dropped because we have a false attack here, or maybe it's it's a normal payload. But the host, the end host, we succeed and manage to travel our payload completely using the fragmentation and TTL value. And now the end host will start to reassemble this fragment together, and now we form an attack here, okay? So the attacker will use a TTL value. So you can, if, if you know, um, this TTL value will be decrement when it passes through a router, for example. So we will send a TTL value, a packet with TTL value, for example, for uh, two. So two will reach here. And when it passes through a hub, it will decrement by one. So it now one, and now it will be zero. Okay, so it will be discarded. Now the attacker will try to send another fragment, but this time with TTL value one. So it will only reach here. The IDS would not, it, it will not reach an end host here. So the attacker keeps sending the packet using this fragmentation, okay, with a different TTL value to reach his payload, okay, completely to the end host. And also he needs to send a fake part to the ideas. That's the insertion techniques. It, it's kind of advanced technique, and you can use an Nmap tool, for example, or Metasploit, and use an option like fragmentation and TTL value, okay? Uh, let me do a demo. Uh, when we enter um, an Active Directory part, I will make an, a slide, and this PowerPoint presentation have, I, I will place, 10 technique to bypass web application firewall and also ideas. So we will use an insertion, fragmentation attacks. We will also use an obfuscation. Obfuscation, it, it's very simple. You can use obfuscation. Uh, let me show you how obfuscation actually works. So obfuscation, if we have a web application firewall, block this payload, for example. Okay. Uh, you can change a little bit here. Now we have a completely different payload. So if the web application firewall or IDS using a signature technique, for example, yeah, this one would be allowed here. So if, if you look here, uh, we have a script, alert script, and this script is a JavaScript, which 
prompt or uh, display a pop-up with one character, okay? But if we have a web application firewall and the web application firewall having its signature, it can plug easily this kind of a script. But in order to bypass using some obfuscation technique, and now we change some character here, okay, by make this one is a capital, okay? And when a web application firewall intercept this payload, he will ignore it because, yep, I don't have this payload in my database. So I cannot plug this one, or even I don't know if this one is malicious or not malicious. Okay, so that's obfuscation techniques. We can go with base 64 encoding, URL encoding. You can change also your source code to attack a web server, for example. But depend here on the situation. You need first to understand what's the application firewall running on the target, like WAFWOOF. This tool will help you to identify what's the application firewall running. And later, you can hack or bypass according okay, you research here how to bypass, for example, Cloudflare, how to bypass uh, mod security, okay, or F5, and so on. Uh, I have resource, but it actually will give it give you um, an holistic approach. Okay, how bypassing an, an anti malware will actually work, because the anti malware companies they develop their strategy now. The anti malware become more sophisticated. Okay, they they not now rely on signatures. They rely on behavior. Okay, detection, anomaly, or heuristic based detection, and so on. Okay. And now we have also sandbox, and sandbox become more advanced as they study or start to emulate here um, a real host, for example, to make um, the malware. Okay. Uh, think he is in a safe environment and start to execute and so on, but it, it's used for study purpose. Um, we have antivirus. Hacker handbook. This book is really great one. It's very, very old, but trust me, it will give you the fundamentals here. So yeah, I discuss here introduction to antivirus software, reverse engineering the core, the plugin system, understanding under antivirus signature, update system, software evasion, and so on. Okay. And in order also to bypass an anti-malware, okay, you need to become familiar with uh, the malicious software, how to write your own malware, for example, okay, and how to analyze malware. When you get uh, this skill, okay, and also you need to understand how the operating system behave and how, and how um, your operating system actually runs the application, okay? So if, if you have this fundamental, you can easily build something by person anti-malware. So it, it's a a game between you know um, good and bad, but it was to start actually. So I recommend this book heavily. It's an antivirus hack handbook. Really a great book you can go and start with.